Hey, you guys, good morning. Look who just decided to stop by. We've got Val Kilmer, of course, the super mega superstar. I was just totally geeking out on them, mm -hmm. on the fact that you're going to be joining me here in this little room. I love it. Um, we've got all these people hanging out from uh, all over the world. Ayub is with us from Leicester, England. Hi. Chris is in Dallas. Daniel is in... Uh, Boston. 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 <laughs> you popped in there just in time. Justin is also in the UK. Monica is in Boulder, Colorado. Renzo is in Venezuela. Hello. Stacey and John, they're in Wilmington. Hi. Stormy is in Mississippi. Howdy. And Timothy is in uh, the Bay Area up in Northern California. All right. And we've got you guys watching on air. Hey, hey, world and YouTubers, if you got a question for Val, go ahead and put it in the comments box or tag anyone in the Hangout, and I'll try to get it to him. Okay, you guys? Val is here to talk about um, the one-man show that you're in right now. I am. Citizen Twain. Um, of course, about Mark Twain. It is all about Mark Twain. But the main thing is it's funny. It is funny. I, I saw a little clip of it. You know why? You know why laughter is important. Why? If you don't, then that's the saddest thing I've heard all morning. Uh, no, I'm wondering more... what you. I know more... why it's important. You do? Yes, okay. the more you laugh, the more endorphins it a trick you. Oh, okay. Because the more <laughs> more you laugh, the happier you are. Absolutely. Whenever I feel sick and down, I will look for a comedy. On it's the best medicine. The best medicine. Absolutely. I completely yeah. agree. I know that you guys have questions for Val, so I'm going to turn it to you, but I just want to quickly get some business out of the way. Uh, Citizen Twain is on stage here um, in the Valley. Is that right? In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Uh, this Saturday on the 6th. And uh, I didn't even mention it on television earlier, but it's uh, valkilmer.com. You can find tickets. All the information. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay, you guys, let's open up the Q&A. Who's got the first question? Who? Who? Go ahead, Ayub. I'll go down the line. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, an honor to meet you, Val. Um, my question has to do with your poetry. You released a book of poetry. It was featured in your movie, The Saint, as well, um, read by one of your characters. I'm just wondering whether you're going to do any more poetry. Have you still been writing? I have. Well, I've been concentrating on uh, the screenplay about Mark Twain and Mary Baker Eddy, and then this play, uh, just about Mark Twain. But uh, yeah, I still I still write. There's two books. Uh, one's a smaller, more recent, a couple years ago. But yeah, it's kind of always uh, always there. Thanks for have asking. Have you got that. any pieces you could uh, share with us right now? No. No, not right now. <laughs> I'm, fill, got, I'm filled with Twain. Twain, Twain Can quotes. you imagine yeah. the kind of like? <laughs> A yeah. one-man show on that. In my head, it's a Twain wreck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? Now, not many people know this, but Mark Twain is, you mentioned, like, he was one of our first stand-up comic guys. Yeah, he might be the first stand-up. He just uh, tells stories, his humor stories on stage, and get people forgetting their troubles. What What is it about Mark Twain that most of us don't know, other than the fact that he, you know, gave us a Huckleberry Finn and, and, and Tom, Tom Sawyer? Tom Sawyer. Mm -hmm. I think the main thing I'm I'm trying to get across on stage is that there's a particular way if you listen uh, to people the way he listened to people without judgment and looking on the humorous side you take a kind of attitude that's very positive about being American and then and then the kind of kind of taking back the the word patriotism to have it mean uh, not so much one particular way of looking at being an American, but but um, seeing yourself as being part of all America. That's mm -hmm. what he really represents to me, is a, a really great uh, love and empathy for how diverse we are mm -hmm. and celebrating it rather than being divisive about it. Exactly. Seeing not so much the differences, but how we're all alike. Why can't we all just ways. get along? Famous, I know, I know. Uh, Chris, yes, go ahead. Yeah, when you're studying someone like that that has a long history, how hard is that to do all the research? Because it's not like someone in today's day and age. That's one. And then two, you ever find yourself so absorbed in, in learning so much about that when even when you're not on set, you end up talking like him at lunch or something like that? <laughs> well, uh, uh, yes. Uh, a lot of times uh, actors uh, like Danny Day-Lewis most recently with Lincoln get, get kind of recognized for... Uh, that way of working and the very often it's it's not so much uh, an eccentricity it's really being economic there's just not that much time when you make a movie and uh, I've taken a lot of time to write this movie um, 
but still things. Uh, I've been working on this play about three years, mm. and they just about two weeks ago finally found a voice I really like for the for Huckleberry Finn. Uh, I've been trying different things, and it just sometimes takes the time that it takes. You know, mm -hmm. I worked on Hamlet for about ten years. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. That's and here, that's and I would talk like this very often for no. <laughs> I would open my shrimp salad like this. <laughs> that's actually funny. Tony Carrasio, I hope I said that name correctly. Tony asked this question. Hey Val, I'm a huge comic fan. I thought you were awesome in Batman. What is the chance of you being in another Batman movie, or not even as Batman, but as another superhero? I had a suggestion that I I'd like to pitch to uh, George Clooney and Michael Keaton that ah, we could all we could be the bad guys. <laughs> that could happen. Yes. Right. Sure. So, because they're those guys are funny, and they can act <laughs> together. I think we would make a dynamic trio, perhaps. Of that guy, yeah. Use Christian Bale for yes. two hours. Justin, go ahead. It's it's similar question to Chris's, but uh, in reverse. Chris was asking about how you get into the head of Mark Twain. What's it like to play somebody that everybody knows so well? Because your portrayal of Jim Morrison, I thought, was absolutely mind blowing, and I wondered how you approached that when he was so well known. Well, uh, you know, I, I think uh, it's a it's a really good question because uh, I think one of the the, the great mysteries of fame is that it feels like we know Jim Morrison, but I don't. I met you know a couple hundred people that knew him, and out of a hundred people, there were 125 versions of Jim Morrison. Sure. Yeah. So it's a kind of uh, it takes a kind of rigor and discipline just to you know read everything and immerse yourself in the material that's available, and then spending a lot of time uh, really daydreaming uh, in a way. Uh, pretending, just spending time, like I've been doing with Mark Twain, just spending uh, hours and hours uh, in and around the things that we know about them, till you start getting uh, intuitions and impressions about uh, thought patterns. So that you know, when you act, you're supposed to not know what's happening and just be surprised, and uh, that's all about the preparation. You know, mm -hmm. it's easy to uh, think about sports. Basketball players don't go out and sort of think about playing basketball. They're in it, but they're yet, doing it all the all day. Yet all there are the things life. that you have to practice, like yeah. it's the first week you got on the team. You go back to the free throw line and do the same thing you did when you were twelve, mm -hmm. dreaming mm -hmm. about being a uh, play Griffin. Daniel, did you have a question? Yeah. Hey, I just want to say, uh, big, big, long time fan, and you've uh, really covered a lot of different um, kind of genres. I first learned of you uh, in your earlier works, and I was saying before you joined us, uh, I'm a fan of your comedy, so it's nice to see you come around to, you know, the Mark Twain thing where you're kind of getting into that comedy side again, and um, I know a couple years back you had done the MacGruber thing and whatnot, but for you, is it, is it really, um, is it refreshing and nice to kind of get back to comedy? Yeah, uh, Hollywood has a real... Uh, um very strict rules about comedies in the movies. They just basically don't give them to actors. Uh, so a guy like uh, um, Alec Baldwin, he played probably a dozen fourth mm -hmm. leads or fifth leads, or Vince Vaughn's the mm -hmm. same. You know, very fine actors. But then, then uh, I think probably Choice just started mm -hmm. uh, taking smaller roles in order to get into. Uh, a kind of rhythm of comedies where they're considered, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I, I I waited too long after the first two I did to get back into uh, comedies, and then it was uh, very hard. And I've been looking ever since. I, I really like it's something so satisfying about making people laugh because it's so healthy and it, it's mm -hmm. so immediate. And on stage, it's really yeah. I wonder, there's no feeling like it. And also, when you're doing a comedy and people don't laugh, you know right away where you're at, and you have to make adjustments doesn't. right away. Well, I loved Robert De Niro in The Fockers, and um, so he's made that jump. Speaking of, uh, working on Heat. Yeah. Loved you in that movie. Thank you. Loved you. There wasn't much comedy in that. No. 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 <laughs> Although I did like, I did like driving <laughs> away with you, all the money. Yeah. No, I found some humor, humorous moments there for you. Um, I have a good sequel. Is there one coming? 
Well, I want I want to do one. You want okay? What is it? Because well, you know, who, do you remember who uh, Al Pacino's stepdaughter was? Yes, I do. You do? I do. Natalie Portman. So mm -hmm. I want to torture Al Pacino because he he killed my best friend and he's retiring. That's my this is my pitch. Okay, because that's and right. So you, so he you doesn't know it, but I start yeah. dating his stepdaughter. That could work. To, to mess with his mind. That could work. And I chase actually. him all around Chicago because Michael Mann likes Chicago. Because Amy Brenneman was here um, just a couple of weeks ago, so yeah. maybe reprise her role too. Um, I also loved you in The Saint. Speaking of, Art Sanchez uh, sent this message. Val, will you be doing any sequels on any of your films from your past? We just talked about Heat. Uh, how about The Saint? I like, I love The Saint actually. I had so I much fun that movie, the playing the characters yeah. and... And I, I like the uh, the idea of a, a good love story with all, all that action. And uh, I'd love to do another one. Wouldn't that be yeah. great? I love the saint. Are you, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Um, well, going back to Mark Twain, um, in all your research and your building of the story, what moment of Mark Twain's life do you feel, feel is most important to you, that you most identify with? That's a good question. Uh, in the play, he uh, had he he wrote quite a bit in the last ten years of his life about being dead, and he said, "All right, now that I'm dead, I'll tell you what I really think." And <laughs> he was trying to work out a very complicated autobiography that he never quite figured out himself, but it really was what James Joyce went on to perfect in Ulysses: this idea that there's the physical reality, there's the historical reality we're all living in, we're all in this mm -hmm. area, we're all here in Los Angeles. So that's just a fact that uh, that affects what we're doing, how we do it, how we talk. And then there's uh, your own historical environment and uh, your conscious thoughts and then your subconscious thoughts. And he was trying to figure out how to tell a story which really represented that it would be a true autobiography. And he didn't quite figure it out, and then he passed on. So it, it's somewhat a bit elusive and frustrating to read the autobiography and parts of it, unless you have this kind of key that he was trying to give you a full representation of his mind. And I think he, he was searching, like we all are, for some sense of uh, peace and happiness. And he, he had great success as a, a writer and a humorist and social commentary uh, uh, that was always, he was always sought after for his opinions. But he was looking for a kind of inner peace that, that uh, I think uh, one of the reasons that he was so enamored with Mrs. Eddy and her religion is that uh, I think a main thing that's inspiring about his life is that he, uh, he, he practiced uh, non-judgment. Mm -hmm. And or just another way of saying that he had a loving attitude about life, but uh, but had lots of trouble with the law and the rules, and always finding um, mm -hmm. you know very often accurate about um, the human flaws in any organized organization, like most religions. And he would uh, he make fun of the lo the logic. I have a, a a question here from Christina. Barber, of all the things you've done, what do you find more rewarding? You have such a body of work, and I, I see the investment you've put in with Mark Twain. Yeah, what what are you most proud of? Um, well, uh, like uh, I did Hamlet years ago, and that's uh, always a, a great uh, uh, a prize uh, for an actor to, you know, embody that, that great character and and say some of the great poetry that's ever been written for the stage. Uh, but the most satisfying thing about it in my, my memory is a long time ago suddenly was uh, when I'd get uh, parents coming back with their kids that there was something about the way that I did Hamlet or the music that I chose and the costumes that made it uh, more appealing to younger people. And that's something I'm trying to do in Hamlet now. So I think is a kind of connection uh, on stage that that separates the movie work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fun and satisfying movies, but but the theater, it's mm -hmm. very immediate, and it's a real sense of uh, creation mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. You're in the place that you're at. The first time, uh, where's Boston? There you are. 
I'm pointing at you, Boston. Daniel. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Um, that's the first time I did uh, any version of this play. It was about 35 minutes at the Mary Baker Eddy Library there. And I made it mostly about Mary Baker Eddy. He wrote a lot of very mm -hmm. funny things about her and some very cruel things as well. Wow. I didn't really, I didn't really answer about uh, favorite part of Mark Twain's life, but I think th this, this serious side of him, this quest for, uh, for, uh, uh, I, I guess you could say, uh, God, what some sense of order. He was so curious about everything, the, and I think uh, that a lot of what he wrote about God and religion is so funny that mm. that's usually what gets addressed. How about you as Val? Have you done your own personal search for that? Or sure, most of, yeah, most of my life I've uh, just been, uh, had, had some try to be disciplined about uh, what's important. I say in the play, for example, I say, What's the most important question in the world? You think about that, children, and I will answer it. So I've written that, and uh, it's about three years now. I'm working on this play virtually every day, wow. and I'll go through most of the day, and I've forgotten to ask myself, what's the most important thing going on? And, you know, it's a strange thing we humans forget how wonderful life is. We get caught up in silly routines uh, that don't really benefit ourselves or others mm -hmm. and uh, it's important to remember it's just as easy as uh, you know ask yourself that question and, and changing what you're going to do for the rest of the day mm -hmm. I'm going to do it right now I'm doing it right now actually Are you? thank how's you how's it going it's, it's going to be a lot better see <laughs> let's go help somebody now, yes exactly Val Kilmer thank you so much for hanging out with us thank you thank you thank you Right. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Will you take a, a quick photo with sure. here with this camera? And don't forget, um, Citizen Twain. It's uh, I this, won't. this weekend. When's it playing? <laughs> oh, it's Saturday. Yeah. At the yeah. at the VPAC. That's the Valley Performing Art Center. How is that? I mean, you're from Nor North North Did Ridge. you grow up in the Valley? I did, which is why I have a lot of jokes about the Valley um, on Saturday night. See? Yeah. That is fantastic that you're going back home. Um, here's the camera. Oh, one more time. <laughs>